good many folks think of civil defense in terms of men and women in white helmets and armbands, watching the skies for bombers that haven't come, rolling bandages for an enemy attack that hasn't happened, and that we hope won't happen. But civil defense is much more than that. Civil defense is all of us as individuals and as members of already organized groups working together. Right now, thousands of us, without realizing it, engage in civil defense activities of many kinds. This is not something in the remote future. Civil defense is an investment of time and dollars on which we are receiving dividends today. It's a living and growing force which in some manner touches all of our lives, whether we know it or not. Here is the story of two truck drivers named Joe and Slim. Hard-working boys who are not very different from the millions of others who pilot these big rigs on the highways all over this great country of ours. It's the story of what civil defense means to them and to all America right now. Looks like you've been out in the town last night. Would you get those satchels under the eyes? How have you been the last couple of days, Slim? We missed you. Uh, I've been down the valley, Sue, hauling people out of the flood zone. 36 hours at the wheel. Man, I'm shot. Well, the ICC suspended all the rules for the emergency, so we didn't have to take any rest. Yeah, they should have been pushing those trucks. <laughs> yeah. We've been getting it all day on TV. It must have been really rough. Here, let me turn it up a little. In three states are slowly going back to normal. Now we can begin to count the tragic toll. 53 have lost their lives. More than 100 missing. Property damage of more than a billion dollars. But there is a brighter side to the picture. The 3,600 families who got out in time. It will be a long time before they forget the truckers who moved them to high ground just as the floodwaters were lapping at their doorsteps. It was a gigantic operation involving more than 600 trucks. The Red Cross, as usual, was right on the job too. We've got a real live hero with us. Oh, uh, skip the hero stuff. Turn it off, Sue, will you? Sure, Slim. Gosh, I'll bet after all you've been through, you don't want to see any more of it. Oh, no, it's not so much that, Sue. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of things I want to remember. You know, things that kind of get you, like... Uh, like those kids at the emergency feeding station the Red Cross set up just outside the flood zone. Now they piled into that grub as though they hadn't eaten in a month of Sundays. And there were funny things, too. Like, well, like the crazy things people take with them in an emergency. Things that give you a pretty good idea of what each of those people was like. Well, the kids, of course, brought the things they loved best, their pets, which didn't always get along together. Some of the men left everything home but their securities. It was pretty amusing sometimes. But it was plenty tough, Sue, and I just as soon forget about it. He hasn't seen anything yet. What if the bomb drops down on us? The bomb? Well, what's that got to do with us? Um, I'll take the pork chop, Sue. Well, not so good today, huh? 
I'll make it corned beef. Haven't you heard of how they're mobilizing trucks for civil defense? In my town, we have a plan that'll put all of our 1,400 trucks to work as soon as we get the first warning of an attack. Some will evacuate people from the probable damage areas to safer places. After attack, some will carry the injured and the helpless to hospitals and shelters. But civil defense traffic won't be all in one direction. After a bombing, there'll be trucks carrying medical supplies, food, clothing, water, extra fire hose and other necessities toward the disaster area. Yeah, that's right. I guess they'll be cooperating with all the other transportation agencies, too. Some of the relief supplies probably will come by water. And the trains will have to unload some distance away from the disaster area. And so will airplanes. But each of them will have its job, too. And we'll have to help all of them deliver the goods. Our civil defense director has told us that every truck in our area has been inventoried and a job assigned to it. Even specialized carriers like tank trucks. They can be steam cleaned in a few minutes so they can be used to haul water. Automobile carriers can haul all sorts of special kinds of equipment, even small boats. Local delivery trucks, the ones that survive, have been assigned assembly points from where they will be sent on other missions like hauling auxiliary police to areas of heavy traffic or auxiliary firemen to help man the hoses. Others will be turned into ambulances to carry the injured to aid stations and hospitals. There's water service, and gas, and telephone communications to be restored. And that's not all either. Under our disaster plan, whole fleets of trucks have been assigned the job of helping to keep the factories going. A bomb can't knock out trucks as long as we have roads to travel on. Yeah, we don't even need roads. I could take that rig of mine across the fields if I had to, big as it is. Yeah, that's right. And we may have to do that because after a bombing, a lot of bridges are going to be out and a lot of roads will be impassable. We may have to do that to keep materials moving into our industrial plants after the bombing to carry away the finished products. And maybe after an attack, we'll even have to move whole factories to new locations. After the first emergency is over, the trucking industry's real job will just be beginning. For no matter what happens, we have to keep producing. Well, that sounds like a lot of organization. But I know we don't have anything like that in my town. Well, they'll get to you, Slim. Civil defense and the trucking industry are planning now on emergency uses for all of our 10 million trucks, spotted in every city and town in the country. That's right. Nearly everybody's doing something for civil defense now. Why, even my kid brother, who's really just a baby, will fly courier missions for the Civil Air Patrol. And Tom, back in the kitchen, is in the emergency feeding unit. And I even broke down myself and became a Red Cross nurse's aide. All kinds of people are working in this together. And they would have overlooked their best bet if they hadn't planned on using the trucks, too. Overlooked a bet? Why, it would have been criminal. We showed them what we could do with trucks and some full dress rehearsals for disaster. There were the Missouri River floods that covered parts of three states. And Texas City where 500 people were killed when a phosphate ship blew up. And the hurricanes that seem to hit us worse every year. 
We did the job then, and if we're organized all over the country as we will be, do you think bombs are going to stop us? Not on your life. Sure, they could set us back, and they might flatten your city or mine. Could be pretty awful. But we can lick them. We can lick them with 10 million traps. Yes, Joe is pretty impressed with the responsibility of his industry in time of disaster, and rightly so. The trucking people have shown us they can do the job by doing it in the past when civil disaster struck. But of course, if the bombs begin to fall, it's going to take more than those 10 million trucks. It's a job for all of us, for me and you and you. And it's a job particularly for trade and industry groups of all sorts. The trucking industry is showing the way. All over the country, they're organizing against the day we hope will never come. And if that day does come, they'll be ready. And come what may, we'll roll forward.